today I'm reviewing the Oron Spark G910 from Logitech. This has been my daily driver for the past few weeks now, and I wanted to give a fair shot to this keyboard. Currently, I have found it to be fairly decent. It features the Romer G key switches, which is exclusive to Logitech and said to have, any, I think, around 10 to 12 million more strokes in key life than a Cherry Amex keyboards. Thank you, Kitty. So I'm not even going to bother trying to fluff or nut you like Linus Tech Tips or uh, Hardware Canucks. I'm an average guy, just like you, and every penny counts. You hear me? Uh, you know it, and I know it. So you don't want to waste your time and or money. The box in and of itself is a fantastic and beautiful presentation. Opening it almost feels like you're getting out fine jewelry or china that's specifically made for shooting mofos in the dick in CSGO. Hard foam, I was expecting soft. The keyboard in and of itself is very, very heavy. It's weighty. And I believe that it does have a metal frame. This is a boon in my opinion. So that way, if you ever felt like hitting a person in the face with this keyboard, yeah, it would break, but it would also break their face. And that, to me, is important. The palm rests that come for this keyboard are obviously geared towards gaming. So, if that's an issue for you, I don't know what to tell you because Logitech doesn't seem to be doing anything about it. Although I found no issues with typing with the gamer hand rest setup. Also, if uh, you do not like glossy finishes because of fingerprints, then you're going to have a tough time lifting up this keyboard because it's glossy all over the sides. Get used to it, baby. Or as they say, get wrecked. I don't know why, but they say it. So keep a nice, soft cloth near you, especially if you have to have it shiny. This is a size comparison between the K120 versus the G910. The G910 is substantially bigger and heavier, obviously, considering the larger price tag and the 120 is only $11 at Walmart. Now, the little rubber feet grommets at the bottom of the hand rest, or palm rest, I should say, after weeks of use will come a loose and you have to stick them back on. It's fairly annoying. I would think Logitech would come up with a better mechanism than a little bit of slight glue. I was hoping that the wire for the Logitech would be braided tethers, but it's not. On top of that, it supports USB 2.0. I mean, I don't know why they didn't do 3.0. But I'm guessing more people have 2.0 than people who have 3.0. And more people have 3.0 than people who have 3.1 USB ports. Live with it. It's not that bad. The keys are said to be 25% faster than other keyboard manufacturers when every millisecond counts in the heat of battle. That's actually what they wrote on the website. Good to know. And I have found that my performance in gaming with the Logitech keyboard has boosted substantially. So there must be some truth to this because I was getting owned in Siege before this keyboard. Now I can at least put up a fight before someone pre-fires out of a window and kills me and I rage quit and cry in my pillow at night. In order to truly use or unleash the powers of this keyboard, you'll have to use the Logitech gaming software, which on occasion is hit or miss at best. I'm willing to admit it and say it's true. Other reviewers won't, I will. I'm not in anybody's pocket yet, but the second I am, believe me baby, I'm going to talk up their stuff. I do like this keyboard. The scallop keys may be something other people don't like at all, but I do. Now, this to me, the scallop keyboards, would have been way better if the WSDA or the WAS keys were slightly different. So that way when I place my hands wrong, I could like, like in the dark I'd be able to just feel it out. You know, like a blind person with braille, make me Stevie Wonder, baby. But Unfortunately, they didn't do this. Not too bad. I can live with it, though. The ARX docking release port is cheap at best to me. Like, it just slides out. It's nothing really special. At first, I assumed you stick your phone in and it links up with your phone and the app. No, it's just a phone base. It's a phone rest. So, if you want, you can put your phone there and not use the display thingy and occasionally send emojis back because there's no way in hell you're typing if you're gaming with this key keyboard. Also, the app launcher is hit or miss too. I tried it with Tomb Raider, it didn't work. So I'm gonna blame it on Tomb Raider for now because that game is a mess and not say that it's Logitech's fault or the app or software. At best, it's confusing at times. I mean, I'm still trying to work my way around it. And in order to use it, you need to be hooked to Wi-Fi for it to find your system. Another thing that kind of blows, I really wish my phone could have just linked to it so that way it could charge your phone and totally work with the app. That would have been legit. Instead, 
Your phone battery just dies as it sits there. Listen, I'm just saying, like if I could have been in like the the brainstorming room, the think tank, that would have been the first thing I would have said. But you know, it's not me. I don't work there. I don't have a real job. I'm a waste of life. You know it. I know it. My mother knows it. My father knew it the day he looked at me and he pushed me out of his BMW and told me I was a disappointment. Hey, 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 that's my life. That's my challenge. It's too real. I'm sorry. I hope I didn't trigger anyone. On the plus side, it does offer the ability to monitor your games. Now, this is actually a part of the app I enjoy, and it's pretty sweet. You know exactly what your temperature are. You know what your CPU is doing. You know what your GPU is doing. The one thing that is a little sucky is it only gives you the base clock of your CPU. So if you're overclocking, it's not going to pick up on that at all. Don't know why, but, you know, whatever. Next, the color profiles. Now, for games like The Division, because this does come with The Division if you buy it from Newegg or Logitech, I think, still. So if you're interested, grab it now. At least you get a free game, even if you don't like The Division. Now, The Division totally supports this keyboard profile thing. So when you're using your gun and it runs out of bullets, the R key starts flashing red. If you run out of grenades, the G key turns off totally. Anything you need to do will flash on the keyboard. This is cool for aesthetic reasons, but if you're in the heat of gaming, you don't really look down and notice it. And plus, it would be on the screen anyway. You'd already know. But it's cool to know it's there. It's interesting to look at. It gives the people watching you play something to look at and go, hey, that's pretty awesome. This does allow for a great deal of customization to your own personal tastes. For me personally, I like Color Wave when I'm doing absolutely nothing. But there are multitudes of things to choose from. I do wish that the software was a bit easier to work with and a bit more free in the sense of giving me the ability to truly customize all my game profiles to match that of the division. Like I'd love to have a fallout scheme where certain keys flash if I need something. Like if you're hurt then like the zero key would flash because that's the key for your uh, stim pack or something. But it doesn't give you that level of creativity in the software. I don't know why. Also, the fact that other games haven't really supported this keyboard is also pretty sucky. I mean, if other game developers do support it, it'd be awesome. But they don't. There are also nine programmable, programmable G keys and M1, M2, and M3 keys. And if you're looking at this, you already know what to do with those. And you can program your own keys, hot buttons, etc. Boom, boom, boom macros you know where i'm coming from baby the one thing that's weird though is when i tried programming macros into the already designed profile for the division it didn't work i couldn't do it in game because the game turns on and the division keys that i have set up just don't work so i think you may have to do it manually i've tried and it's not working right so i'm gonna have to go through it again maybe i did something wrong user error is possible Per as usual, these sort of expensive keyboards have the obligatory, you know, media keys. There's also a light switch button and, you know, standard fare, real standard fare. I mean, the roller key for the sound is awesome, don't get me wrong. And that's about it with that. You know, it's nothing too mind-blowing, earth-shattering, soul-shaking. But if it is something you've grown accustomed to then it's a must have. I mean, people who say they have media keys cannot live with a keyboard that doesn't have it anymore. Me personally, I forget they're there. Would have been nice if I could make the media keys a different color. Just me personally saying. Like, no matter what you do, the media keys will stay the Logitech default color. Is it worth your price? And currently on Newegg, it's $161. Now, if you love the bling factor of the lights, it's almost a no brainer. For me, I don't have anything else as far as keyboards go that are as expensive or as luxurious. So my view may be a bit skewed and you may have to do more research yourself. But coming from a standardized keyboard to this one, I truly see the benefit of the mechanical keyboard and especially the Logitech one. I definitely like it. I like the Logitech keyboard far more than the headset. The headset felt like a waste of money, but this keyboard doesn't feel like a waste of money at all. So if you're looking for a keyboard that offers a great deal of customization, also smart lighting, I mean, you get way more lighting features with this keyboard than any other keyboard on the market currently, as far as like overall illumination. And I really dig that because I'm a flashy type of guy. I look at my computer, it's flashy. I have to be flashy and I'm very handsome. This is how I try to attract women. I invite them over to my house and show them how flashy my computer is. Now, if you do have the 
keyboard from Logitech, the G933 or G633, or the uh, G502 mouse, you can link them all together and they can color illuminate and color cycle together. But I have found the color cycling isn't perfect and it isn't that awesome, it's just solid colors. If only there was a way to color wave with the headset and the mouse. But this isn't a possibility right now. And I'm just probably nitpicking for something completely and utterly useless that doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Overall, if you're in the market for a keyboard and you're not used to Cherry MX or you've never used them, this is a good in-between point. Now, there is a clicking factor that does exist with these keys, and maybe it's not the right click for you because I know some people have real weird aesthetics like, I, I don't like the way it clicks, I need a certain clicking sound, I need gratification from it. Also, you don't have to press the keys all the way down, but since I'm coming from an older mouse design that I've used all my life, I'm still getting used to the fact that I don't have to use so much force with the keys. Just me, I don't know about you. But overall consensus, I will say that this keyboard is good. I like it. I personally do. I really do like this keyboard. What little faults I have with it between the rubber grommets and the bottom coming off, the fact that like the stands on the back aren't high enough for my taste. Like I'd like it a little bit higher, but I guess that's not a possibility because of the way the keyboard is designed with this gaming pad, uh, gaming palm rest, but if it was just a little bit more arch, oh, it'd be so sick. Maybe I'd just like put something under the keyboard and lift it up higher. It's my personal preferences. But I could say I'd recommend this keyboard. I could definitely say that. If you like what you see, if you don't mind scalloped keys, if you like the color jumping, you don't mind using your phone to monitor your computer, then this is for you. It is. If this is your first mechanical keyboard, I could totally see you getting this and having no problem with it whatsoever. I mean, the only way you could find a problem with this is if you are super, super duper picky about scallop keys. Other than that, it's perfectly fine. It's usable, it's workable, it's fast, it's flashy, it's fun, it's weighty, it feels like it's real deal, serious. It's a good keyboard. And I guess I'd like to also thank Logitech for at least answering my retarded emails as I made my demands and told them how I'm a huge YouTube star. And I certainly hope they take into account that uh, because of me, two people who have known me and realized my keyboard have bought it. So I do have power in the community. That's two more people, two more sales than Logitech would have gotten initially. I want that on the record, please. Now I need to stop this because this is a pointless, ramble, a pointless rambling session. Please forgive me. Don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, support me on my never-ending journey to become a corporate shill. I'm willing to be bought and sold like the cheap, money-grubbing whore I am. Thank you, and good night. This is Walter Cronkite. Oh, where's the off button? Oh god, now it's Ty Howard. Is this name Ty Howard? I don't have to tell my fucking computer. Three things you want to tell me, hot dick bag, about how to go from living in a trailer to the Hollywood Hills? Oh, you're going to show up your Lamborghini that you're not renting. Of course not. Your Maserati. You have to keep four of those. And this Lamborghini. But what do you do to make money, Ty? How does this work? Oh, you fleece douchebags. Because you have the pyramid of wealth. And it's too stupid to realize it's literally a pyramid scale scheme. And it's this pyramid of wealth. I'm going to choke to death. I'm so sick of you, Ty. Knowledge.